What is up? Matt Pratt here, and yes, the video that I've been waiting for, I'm sure you have too. I want to paint this entire Supra, and I'm devoting my entire weekend to it. I don't want to stop until it's completely done. So stay tuned, hit that subscribe button while I roll this intro. Where did we leave off? So a week and a half ago, I put out a video that we finished up the bodywork on the fenders, the hatch, and hood. Now, over the past week, we've been focusing on our Porsche. If you want to catch up with the Porsche build, check out that video. But we have been doing a little bit of work on the Supra. As you can see, I got the windows taken out. This, this quarter panel looks completely blocked. Big thanks to Lewis, by the way. He's a guy you don't see much. I post a little bit of footage on here, but he actually, double checks my bodywork, gives me a second look, a second feel, and fixes any issues that he doesn't like about it. You can see he's primed a couple spots on this car for me. So I love it that he puts his hands on it and uh, he tells me like this quarter panel turned out pretty good and he's like, you're good to go to shoot it because they he did that for me on this Porsche and the Porsche turned out amazing. It was really good. I'm really glad that I got people like him that have my back. Anyways. So, our quarter panels are blocked. You got a little bit of sanding to do on there. I still got to do our jams. These jams are gross. I still have to take them completely apart. Same thing with uh, door jams and everything. I also have to paint the underside of the hatch and the hood. I have to do that before I paint them just because I don't have a stand that will allow me to paint both sides at the same time. So, we got to flip them over, shoot the underside, let it dry, flip them back over, prep them out tape them up and then shoot them. All right, enough talking, let's get to work. Sides all taped up. Got this hood. I wanted to save these stickers. This is uh, actually a JDM hood from Hot Pot Garage. He hooked me up with this, and I just love the Japanese writing on it, so I definitely want to keep it. We used to like always try to keep Japanese stickers or whatever they were anytime we got a part from Japan. Sneaking in the door handles, why not? I'm shooting the color. I might as well start sneaking in the little parts now, just because those are the parts you're always waiting on in the end. So we'll kick this booth on and start spraying. on the underside. Now you see I left the center here, the primer uh, color. I don't know, I'm weird about keeping the car as OEM as possible. It's kind of like restoring it to its best OEM condition. And they didn't put paint in there, so why not? I didn't put paint there, so um, it's not a big deal. Um, anyways, all this looks really good. And I snuck in the door handles and they look awesome. So now, all this stuff is drying. We can jump back on this door. I gotta get all this crap off of this car. This uh, Dynamat, whatever. I can't have it on the inside of these doors. So I'm gonna disassemble as much as I can of the door and hopefully this stuff comes off pretty good. I haven't turned the heat on in the shop yet. It's about 50 degrees in here. I think that's what it says, it might say 60. Um, I'm hoping that if I keep it cold that it's not as gooey and it might come off. 
Wish me luck. Now this is a disaster. The heat gun gets the stuff off, but it leaves an insane residue, and then I'm here fighting, scraping the residue off. It does come clean, but this is gonna take up so much time, but it's gotta get done, so I just gotta stay on it. That's not how I wanted to spend the first couple hours of prepping out this car. Absolutely not. That was probably the worst thing I've ever did on this car was take that crap off. It was so tedious and it's still on a lot of these parts, but I'm not even playing. I'll pay to replace those later down the road. I just wanted it off of the area that I was going to paint. That was complete bull. It is what it is. It's off. And guess what? I get to do the other door. And it's uh, good enough, um, yeah. It happens to be two o'clock in the morning. I came out here at seven o'clock and yeah, I'm beat. All I did was take this Dynamat crab off of doors. Not a very successful start to this weekend to get this entire thing painted. So I'm gonna get some sleep and I have to come back tomorrow after work. Such a nice day. All right. <sighs> it is mess. Like, this is all from the doors that I did last night. <sighs> this is, this stuff turns to tar and it'll literally soak a rag when you put chemicals on it. I literally saved all the sound ending I pulled out of this car. Like, it's ridiculous. So, <sighs> we're gonna wait and see how much of a waste it was. All right. Uh, it's obviously the next day. Um, I literally worked out here till two in the morning. I mean, each one of those doors took three hours a piece. It, it was insane. I don't even want to talk about it. It's done, it's over with, I'm happy with it. Let's move on. Uh, I want to finish cleaning these doors up, taking the tin off. And if you remember in my other video, I flipped these doors over and I had an issue with a little bit of rust down here and the seam sealer kind of messed up. So while the doors flipped over, I actually want to dig all this back out and re-seam seal it. It's had a door skin on it before previously. You can still see the door is still kind of damaged here. Nothing I can really do about that. But I can do something about all this shoddy seam sealer work that's actually rusting. So I'm gonna take care of this real quick, get these doors squared away, and then I can flip them over and start blocking them. All right, so I got most of that stuff dug out. It is not pretty. Um, and I grinded down some of their wells. They were just sticking up a little too high. Uh, this definitely could have been repaired a lot better. You can see the edge of the door seam. Like, the thing is, is when you take a door skin completely off, you can get to this entire frame. This could have been easily tapped out and straightened, but apparently they didn't. Sad part is it's a little too late for now. I would have to tear this whole door skin back off and get another one and put it on in order to do this correctly. Um, so we're just gonna hope that these wells hold and that my seam sealer is gonna keep the corrosion protected a little bit better than what you see here. So, all right, I'm gonna tape it up and seam seal it.
All right, that seam sealer job is done. Built it up in there. Hopefully uh, it won't crack and uh, create any more rusting. Uh, I have no clue why it's yellow here and it's white up there. Maybe because I was coming towards the end of the tube. It feels like it's cured, so it should be good. So I am going to clean up a little bit more of this. Um, you can see, you get up close, it's still got a couple streaks or whatever, nothing crazy. I wanna peel the window while I have it flipped over. And I think it's time to get these uh, doors flipped over and start sanding them. It's the only part of the car that we haven't had completely blocked yet. And I'm still trying to make up my mind, what should I paint first? Doors and bumpers, then the car, then the hood and hatch, or vice versa. Still thinking about that. Okay, so the door is pretty much almost blocked out, but I wanna show you guys something. This dark area is guide coat, and I'm blocking it down, and this low spot shows up. That's actually guide coat. As I stand this area, the block, it just highlights it. I mean, it's definitely like a little ding there, and I, I straighten this entire door, so that's why it's really important to use guide coat. And I have, I think, a low area over here too, which should show up. And as you can see, this is your low area. All guide coat is, it's a really dark dust, and as you sand the primer and try to make it level, try to make it flat or straight, um, obviously the blocks aren't gonna hit all the low spots and it just exposes them. And then you have to figure out what you wanna do with them. So this, obviously from when they put on the door skin, it's just a low area here, it rides like that. Uh, this area looks like they didn't take care of it very well so I'm just gonna put a skim coat in there and I'm gonna fill this little ding here but the rest of this door blocked out really really good I'm pretty confident about it So made a couple little repairs to the door that I found and same thing with this one. They weren't perfect, but I found the problems before I painted it. I want to let it dry for a pretty long time. I think the next step is to actually start prepping this car out. I did start taking it apart while I was priming the doors and I noticed a couple things. I'm glad I'm catching them. Just like the rust in here. I think this is just faulty prep work. I mean, the paint is just like flaking away. It looks like it was rusting. Like it wasn't even attached to the primer. Somehow it got behind it. So I'm going to try to find more areas like that, but try to definitely dig those out, clean them up really well. I don't want that happening again. Looks like Supras have like a water issue where they drain at. It sucks because the drain over there I broke. So I'm gonna have to figure out a way to fix that or replace it. Good thing is, is uh, uh, this thing is going right in the garage it's not going to sit outside and hopefully i don't have an issue with a rainy day so i'm not really worried about you know how well they drain but water being caught up in here or trapped in here is definitely an issue and i'm hoping i don't have that issue when i put all this back together but we'll see a lot of things i got to clean up as uh you can see um you know we have the windows taken out and it just looks like a mess in here i want to clean up all that and that is not what is supposed to happen you can see here that the primer is like separating from the primer, which is really weird. Kind of, it just makes me think that this car has crap paint on it all the way around. And usually a sign of crap paint like that, the best way to fix it is to strip the entire car down. I definitely didn't have time to strip this entire car down and sandblast it and so on. I think I'll be okay risking putting my paint over top of this paint and of course treating affected areas that are obvious. So anyways, back to prepping. I can't wait to sand the hell out of this. Like this bothers me so bad that it's not painted. So I'm gonna work on the back forward.
So we're pretty much screwed for my goal to paint this entire car on the weekend. It is now Sunday and I ordered material to come in on Saturday and I waited all day Saturday and nothing showed up. So it's gonna be here Monday, which sucks. We still have plenty of stuff to do. But so far, this goal of mine to paint this car in a weekend has just been failing all over the place. It's just the bad luck of this Supra. It's gonna be a main issue. And it all started with three hours to take the Dynamat off of these doors, you know? That screwed me big time, but it is what it is, man. I'm just gonna keep hustling on this sucker because, you know, the more and more time I put in it, it it's eventually gonna get done. I'm not gonna give up. All right, so back to the prep work. I noticed we had a lot of moisture built up in this channel. There's a weather stripping that goes here and it just somehow holds moisture in here and the paint that they put on here isn't protecting it very well or this is this is pre-existing and they didn't treat it right. So we need to treat it right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grind the hell out of this, try to get all this rust out. I'm gonna spray a converter on it and then I'm gonna spray some epoxy primer on there. Epoxy primer should seal that sucker down so no moisture should penetrate it and with the rust converter underneath of it, it should pause that rust for a pretty long time. Anyway, so that's the next step that we're gonna do on this car. After that, it's just, it's just get it all sanded in the booth tonight so I can maybe take a half day tomorrow and come and just spray insane. Uh, video is gonna be a little bit late because of this, but it is what it is. That's cars for you. All right, that looks a whole lot better. It's still got some pitting here and there, but most of it grinded out. Started actually taking the mini belt sander to it, and I don't want to use that too much because that really makes metal really thin, but it really digs it out really good. And I started sanding this with 80. I can't get the 80 into here, but I'm pretty sure that if I put two coats of epoxy primer on it that it's gonna definitely stick and bury it and hold everything back. And then that should be enough for me to sand it down to where I can get that smooth finish before I paint it. Uh, I am gonna spray this a little later. I don't wanna spray it right now. I'm gonna finish prepping out this side of the car so I can get it all squared away. And uh, I'll probably shoot that uh, tonight real quick just so it can dry overnight. Epoxy primer takes forever to dry, so. All right, back to more sanding, yay! So here's an issue that I've been dealing with with this car the entire time is just paint is flaking off everywhere. I mean, here I am about to prep this area out and I blow it off and literally the paint is just flying off, which sucks because I have to feather it out and clean up this kind of stuff, get some in there so much because I don't know where this could happen all over the car once I put my paint over it. But those are the kind of risks that you run into with a budget build is determining whether how much time, effort, money is going to take to fix something like this. You know, I just sand it down, I could fix it but it could be something critical that could cost a lot of money. And then that kind of throws off your budget bills. So pretty much what I'm doing is this sign, if this wasn't a budget bill, would mean don't trust it, strip all the paint off. But since it is a budget bill, I'm gonna blow it off in areas and, and just treat them as they go. And then we'll just see how it goes. <laughs> Luckily, I'm a painter. If I have any other affected areas going down the road, I just take it apart and paint it. But if you're doing a car for yourself, that's a decision that you have to make, whether you risk it you know, for to risk something later down the road peeling or whether you get it taken care of properly and then all of a sudden it becomes a lengthy and costly process. There's some more right there. Okay, so this car I think is prepped out for the most part. I think I'm ready to pull in the booth and actually start taping it up. Everything looks as good as it's gonna get. I think it's gonna look great. Definitely isn't perfect, but for this kind of build, it's gonna be good. So, um, all right, so now I just have to clear out everything in this booth, sweep this booth down, get it as clean as possible. Then I can pull this thing in to tape it up. These door handles turn it out good. <laughs> One of the first pieces painted. Set some light on it. Dude, the whole car looks like that. Oh my god, it's gonna be 
bomb. Let's use some clamps to hold them open so I can spray them inside and out. For the most part, they came out pretty good. So, just a taste. Before we tape it up, let's show you what I was doing here. I found this like somewhat OEM primer color. That's actually the color right there. Um, hmm. Let me try a different color. All right, let's try this again. Okay, this looks a little closer to the factory color. You can kind of see it a little darker there. Maybe this just looks fresher. Anyways, uh, so the plan is to tape the car up, pull the bag down over the wheel and tire, and then I'm gonna take the fenders and sit them on top of it. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna let overspray blow in here naturally, and then I can get that natural break off that comes on these cars naturally from the factory. The reason why I wanna paint the fenders on the car is just I can fit more stuff in the booth at once. So, cut down on so many booth loads I gotta do. I've never done it before, we're gonna try it. Let's we'll see what happens. Okay, so I kind of like it. It's got enough room for it to naturally blow in there. Oh, I should have taped that hole up. I'm gonna have to get in there somehow. And everything looks good. I actually put a piece of tape in here to kind of bump this out a little bit so I can get some color in there. I do like it. it. Saves me a lot of space in here. The only thing I don't like is that I can't get the back side of this. And I hammered and dollied it and it's got some bare metal in there. So maybe before I take these, when I take these fenders back off, I'll get up in there and like, I don't know, tape it off and like shoot it or something. I definitely want the corrosion, corrosion protection. So uh, same thing on this side, everything looks good. I'm pretty happy with it. I can really spray these hinges and make them super glossy. I hate it when this looks so good and this doesn't. So I wanted all that taped up sprayed at the same damn time. Yeah, everything looks, you know, pretty good. Just double checking everything. I gotta figure out what to do with the doors next. I don't have a stand that I thought I had. So we're gonna have to rig something up for sure. I think she's taped up pretty good. I just kicked the heat on in the booth, trying to get a little warmer in here. I'm trying to get it to like 80 degrees. Everything looks pretty good. This this situation here is kind of sketch, but I just want to like dust some color in here. It doesn't have to be perfect. I do have a lot of open holes. It's gonna risk dirt blowing out. It is what it is, man. I just got so many spots that need color. It's really tough, you know, to do it in one shot, you know. So I'm just gonna have to really airbrush my color in here, keep my low pressure, so I don't disturb any unwanted dirt to fly out. So. This looks really good. I gotta put something in here to space this out so I can get color in there, but I'm pretty confident about that. She is looking ready for paint. And the next step is to actually edit this video. Yes, I gotta cut it off right here. I have way too much footage, I know it. There's no way I'm gonna be able to shove an hour long video out here. I'm gonna chop it up into pieces. I am gonna paint this car tonight, but I do have to cut the video off right here. The next video will definitely be me painting for sure. Uh, if you wanna keep up with what I do on the daily, follow my Instagram at Hustleworks. I only have like 200 followers on there. I don't post much, but I am gonna post every single night on there so you can see when videos are gonna come out, what I'm doing and so on because I do work every single night. If I'm not working, I'm editing and that's one of the main reasons why I can barely get out one video per week, sometimes two if I'm lucky. So anyways, follow that so you can keep up with me. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Like, comment, share. I'll see y'all next week in a painted Supra.